Hans Wormhat. This is a video on the Spanish flu and how there was this thing a hundred years ago and they called it the Spanish flu and it's exactly everything that's going on right now. And yeah, so I just want to show you some old newspaper clippings mostly and just talk about talk about what I see. So this is talking about a newspaper article from 1919, so almost exactly a hundred years ago. The Age proclaimed on March 10th of 1919 that the weekend's reopening of Melbourne theaters marked an end to the ridiculous state of affairs imposed by a panic-stricken government that had unfairly forced citizens to mope at home and get influenza of the brain. And I think that this just perfectly sums up everything that is happening today, too. It's called the Corona, and Corona is crown. And these people are Kabbalists, and the crown is the mind. And so that's they're trying to tell you that it's all in your head. It's a mind virus. And, you know, I don't even want to get into the whole... There, there's some doubts about the whole virus and germ theory that they propose. But I don't want to talk about that in this. I just want to look at the old, old newspaper stuff and show you that everything that's going on today already happened a hundred years ago. There were big debates about the efficacy of masks as there are now. One doctor proclaimed masks, masks were as useful as a barbed wire fence for keeping out flies. The masks looked a little different. I think these ones are really silly. The ones that look something like this. Uh, but, you know, styles change a little bit, but the main idea is still there. Here we have a nice advertisement from Johnson & Johnson. This just reminded me of how, you know how on the TV, all the commercials started being about this thing. It didn't matter what your product is. These people were, they want to get a slice of the pie. There's this big psyop going on, and so everybody wants to jump in on it. All the, all the major companies, anything that gets put on the TV, it's all controlled. They're all a part of the club. It's a big club. And so they control all narratives. That's why you didn't see a single TV commercial that talks about how, oh, this is just all made up and it's just in your head and it's no big deal. There aren't, you don't get two sides to things. And even when you get the other side, it's a controlled opposition. But if anybody wondered why... Why did all the commercials turn into commercials about COVID? Why, when I want to go pay my gas bill, why is my gas company talking to me about COVID? Why is my electric company talking to me about COVID? Why is my car insurance sending me emails about COVID? And it's because they got to they gotta be a part of the, the thing, the PSYOP, it, what's going on. Just like today, people, people with just the low, lower level jobs get forced into this thing. They don't have a choice. The, their choice is either comply with what we're telling you to do or go find a new job. I've read people's comments talking about quitting their jobs or denying, refusing a job offer because the people were telling them you're going to have to wear a mask. And... For me, it's it's just one step away from the mark of the beast. This type of thing, it's clearly showing us that they are willing and able to go ahead with the mark of the beast. In almost all the states now, you cannot go shopping for food unless you follow these mandates. And that's exactly getting at the whole idea of the mark of the beast. They're going to come out and say, oh, you don't have the vaccine or you don't have the this, therefore you can't shop. I mean, we really are already there with the mask thing. You're not, you're not putting a piece of fabric over your face. You're not allowed to shop. That's, we already have that now. And we had that back then too, a hundred years ago. So here, look, they have a Kabbalah bracelet. That's a Kabbalah bracelet on the wrist. I thought this was a funny image. Very strange. Is this supposed to be some sort of filtration device for rich people back then? They got the pyramid with a capstone. This looks like just a photo op. That's the magic wand hand sign right there. And this child looks perfectly healthy. 
So the same kind of thing that we have going on today, it was going on back then. All the major companies back then were advertising stuff related to the Spanish flu. Everybody was talking about it. All of the newspapers were constantly talking about it, just like today. I thought this was a great image. A lot of these people could, you could just plop them down in America today and they would look like everybody else walking around, you know, a bunch of no jawed eyebrows right on top of their eyes, uh, free Martins, double chin, even though they're young and well, I mean, not quite a double chin, but still they got pudge, you know, they got pudgy underneath the chin because that's, that's one of the areas women put on fat, but look at, look at how they're sitting. Men don't sit like this. The hip structure of a woman is what makes these people sit like this. Free Martins are very comfortable sitting like this because it's how women sit. It's just the way that their leg structure works. Natural men don't sit like this. It crushes crushes things, and also just our hips are not built the same, so this is not how men cross their legs. So all of this gender inversion stuff, all the Free Martins, I mean, this guy even looks like he has an eyebrow scar. So who knows what type of surgical things that they did way back when. But look, they all sit like women. They're all sitting like women. Okay, so this is just from a Wikipedia article. I just want to give some broad overview things. It began to appear in San Francisco in the fall of 1918. The first documented case was in late September. By mid-October, the city had more than 2,000 cases. Okay, their numbers are fake. Uh, the city's Board of Health enacted various measures to try to curb the disease, such as banning gatherings, closing schools and theaters, and warning citizens to avoid crowds. Professions that serve customers, including barbers, hotel and rooming house employees, bank tellers, druggists, store clerks, were, were required to wear masks. Yeah, so that's exactly what's happening today. You don't want to follow our orders, you're fired. And today it's even crazier. We're at the plexiglass stuff. That's up. It's so nonsensical. The the whole play. It's just a big play production, and that is the virus. the The virus is all these crazy things that people are doing to change their lifestyle, even though you know much ado about nothing. What's actually happening is just the happening. There, it's all a big reaction to nothing. On October 25th, the city passed an ordinance requiring everyone in San Francisco to wear a mask while in public or when in a group of two or more people, except at mealtime. Initial compliance with the mask ordinance was high, with an estimated 80% of people wearing masks in public. The Red Cross sold masks at the ferry terminal for incoming passengers. Gotta make a buck. Anyone who failed to wear a mask or wore it improperly was charged with disturbing the peace warned and for subsequent violations fined or jailed and here is probably another one of the best little tidbits of information that i found it's the same type of mocking remember when fauci fauci fo means fake i don't know how it's pronounced but the this person's name has fo in it which is means fake in french and apparently it also means jaws in italian but anyways you know how fauci went to the baseball game and threw a terrible pitch, threw it like a girl, and and was wearing the number 19. Look at the mocking there, wearing the number 19, and was in the stands not wearing a mask. Okay, look at what's going on here. The city health officer, so the person, exactly like we have today with the Fauci thing, the city health officer and the mayor, so the people barking the orders, pay, both paid fines for not wearing masks at a boxing match. And there's no way that they paid the fines. They just say that they do. They're laughing. They're laughing. Oh, look at all the plebs who have to follow the rules. Where we're the ones telling them to do these things and we don't have to do it. It's They're hypocrites and they're laughing at you. So this is talking about the formation of the Anti-Mask League in San Francisco. Although there were some complaints from citizens during the initial period, the new ordinance galvanized more serious opposition and the Anti-Mask League was formed. 
Members of the League included physicians, citizens, civil libertarians, and at least one member of the Board of Supervisors. An estimated 4,000 to 5,000 citizens attended the meeting on January 25th. Some members of the League wanted to collect signatures on a petition to end the mask requirement, while others wanted to initiate recall procedures for the city health officer. The president of the League, suffragist attorney and labor rights activist, whoever, was a fierce critic of the mayor, and it has been suggested that the anti-mask league protests were politically motivated. It's exactly like today how they they paint anti-maskers as like a Republican. They got to play both sides and make everything political. They refuse to allow people to just say, no, I don't do politics. I don't want to hear about it. I don't believe in politics. The votes are fake. They just burn them. And it's all just a puppet show. They don't want people talking about that, how it's all a show. Red team, blue team, both play for purple team. And so what they do is they control the opposition. What do you know? The anti-mask league, it's not somebody saying, oh, this is all fake and, and dumb and they're all puppets and... They're going to make it political. And so that's what they do. They make it political. Some objections to the ordinance were based on questions of scientific data, while others considered the requirement to infringe on civil, civil liberties. Same thing as today. You got different talking points. There's a lot of people that just talk about how they're not safe and they're not effective, which is true. And then you got a lot of people saying, you can't tell me what to do. My body... Uh, you know, my body, my rights. What, what's the saying? I can't think of it right now. But anyways, oh, my body, my choice. You can't make me wear a certain garment. You know, it makes me think of what they tell us about the Holocaust. Making, making people wear certain garments. That's, I mean, makes me think of Islam too. Forced face coverings. In addition to complaints from the Anti-Mass League, some health office Officers from other cities also contended that masks were not necessary. The San Francisco health officer criticized the secretary of the state's board of health for questioning the efficacy of masks, saying, the attitude of the state board is encouraging the anti-mask league. Okay, whatever. Now, that's just for background. Let's get into just some pictures, and I'll just point out little details. There's enough of these old clippings that I could probably make a whole nother video on this. It's just very interesting going back and seeing how, how little has changed and how they like to rehash old ideas. You ever notice that they have a hard time coming up with truly original ideas? Usually the, it's just rehashing of things different. They put a different paint job on it and sell it to you as something new. What's going on today is exactly what has already happened. You know how they say history is do doomed to repeat itself? It's because they're the ones writing history, and they're the ones writing the current story, which will become history. And so one of the things they do is just completely rehash old ideas, and that's why it repeats itself, because they make it repeat itself. They try old tricks because they know they work. They knew that this worked because they've done it before. So, I mean, here I just thought it was interesting. Dreamland rink, and they were protesting against the unhealthy mask ordinance. Uh... Anyways, continuing on, Anti-Mask League, mass meeting ends in Battle Royale. I, this would have been something interesting to keep reading about, but all I got was the title. L look at what we got here. We got a 33. Influenza cases, so influenza cases reported yesterday totaled 85, showing a steady decrease in the epidemic here. 85 is 13. Deaths reported number 20. And so actually notice that that's kind of an interesting thing. 8 plus 5 is 13, and then they give us a 20. 20 plus 13 is 33. And then we also get another 33 here, and written out in words. Isn't that kind of interesting? 85 is just a number. 20 is just a number, like written with numerals. But then the all-important 33 is written out in words. Maybe they would say because it's the beginning of a sentence, so it's awkward to... But they could have rewritten it in a different way. Anyways... 33 arrests were made in violation of the mask ordinance. So what that tells me is those are all fake. They probably weren't actually arresting people for this stuff. And it's the same. We get the same stories today. They're going to tell you that if you don't wear your mask, you're going to jail. They're going to tell you if you don't wear your mask, you're going to get shot. When these are fake stories that are just meant here to keep the sheeple in line, to make people do, do what they're told. But notice how the health official... 
and the the mayor or whatever are going to the boxing match and not wearing their masks and claiming to pay the fine and just laugh about it. Despite the evident benefit of the mask, it's not evident. Masks, somebody asked me if I wore a mask and masks are okay if you're doing something, messing around with dirty stuff. Like one time I cleaned out a bunch of ivy in my backyard and I ended up getting like a respiratory, I got sick because I was breathing in all this crap that that was coming out of the ivy when I was cleaning it. Okay, you can go ahead and wear a mask in a situation like that, but I see people wearing their masks to go get their mail outside. I see people riding bikes and wearing their masks out in the fresh air. It's the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen. People really do have a mind virus right now, and sometimes it's hard to tell if, if they just enjoy going along with the game some people are just actors. They know all this stuff is fake, but they love to be a part of it. But then you also just got the asleep people who are scared, actually scared of nothing. So here, I just wanted to show you some of the advertisements. A lot of people, they want to make a buck off of these things. Avoid the flu, build up now. Uh, by taking Ch Chasco Vin, a most palatable bodybuilding tonic. Anyways, um... I thought this was a really, I don't know, just fancy. I mean, inter I say the word interesting all the time just because I don't know what else to say. It just, it's, it is very interesting. Like why, why they would come up with stories like this. They have to sell the narrative. Fancy coffins put under ban. Undertakers are notified that epidemic has caused great coffin shortage. Why, why do the undertakers need to be notified? Shouldn't it be self-evident? So this is just what I get from this. Why did somebody have to go tell the undertakers, hey, stop making fancy coffins. There's too many too many people dying. Wouldn't the undertakers just notice, hey, we're running out of coffins at a rate that's faster than we can make them? No, 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 no. It had to be mandated to them by the government. Stop making fancy coffins. Only it's just a psyop. They just want to, they have to prove it's it's a huge epidemic somehow, even though people aren't actually dying. They have to prove that it's important and scary. So they just do stuff like this. Just so that they can get a little article about it. So yeah, I thought that was very interesting. The undertakers have been notified. It's not like they just realized. It's not like real life where they would just realize, oh dang, we're selling out of coffins. We better start mass producing the cheap ones. No, they had to be mandated by the government. That's how you know the BS. Refuses to dawn... They're, I mean, the interesting, the word dawn. Refuses to dawn influenza mask. Shot by officer. Uh, while scores of passerby scurried for cover, H.D. Miller, a deputy health officer. So here we go. We have a, we have a deputy health officer shooting people. It's probably just all a fake story. Um, a deputy health officer shot and severely wounded James, can't really read it, a horseshoer in front of a downtown drugstore early today following this person's refusal to don an influenza mask. According to the police, Miller shot in the air when Wisser, I guess, first refused his request. Wisser closed in on him and in the seceding affray was shot in the arm and the leg. Hmm... <laughs> Wisser was, or Weiser, I don't know how it's pronounced, excuse me, was taken to the Central Emergency Hospital where he was placed under arrest for failure to comply with Miller's order. Maybe it is, his name is Weiser, which is kind of a play on words, I don't know. But we see, we've seen stories exactly like that. I've read probably a dozen stories now of, if you refuse to wear your mask, you're going to get beat up, you're going to get shot, you're going to get, and these are just fake stories to try to keep people in compliance. Here's another, here's another break from, from those types of things and more trying to sell you something. Spanish flu claims many victims in Canada and should be guarded against. Minard's liniment is a great preventative, being one of the oldest remedies used. It's cured thousands of cases of gripe, bronchitis, sore throat, asthma, and similar diseases. It is an enemy to capital G germs. Just thought this was a, a good advertisement. They were trying to sell, push all sorts of tonics. 
everybody's tonic was going to save you from the Spanish flu. Wear veils and avoid influenza, health man says. I just thought that was funny. Health man. Got to listen to the health man. Wearing of chiffon veils was advocated by Dr. Royal S. Copeland, health commissioner, as one means of checking New York's continually spreading epidemic of influenza. They wanted you to wear a veil. Apparently, these veils would serve as an almost absolute preventative. Okay, crazy. Now, look at this. This was something that I did not expect to run into. And again, they've rehashed the same old ideas. You know how we have the whole Black Lives Matter thing? But then they also have been talking over and over about how blacks are more proportionally getting hurt by this influenza thing. Look at what we had here. Influenza epidemic fatal to Indians. And you can pause any of these slides that you want. I'm not going to read them all. Eskimos stricken with influenza. So just like today, we have the, oh, these poor oppressed people are the ones that are, un, that are unequally being affected by this. Way back 100 years ago, what do you know? Back then, it wasn't the black, the, the black people that were getting unfairly, unfairly targeted by a virus, allegedly. Back 100 years ago, who were the oppressed people? The, the Indians and the Eskimos. So we had second waves back then. Says the influenza will come back. Mm, some doctor predicted that the world would again be swept by an epidemic of influenza far more severe and disastrous than last year. When, oh no, thousands of lives. It's kind of another thing too. The figures that they gave of how many people died back then for the Spanish, it, it just seemed unimpressive. Like, wow, you, you really forced all these people to do all this stuff back then? And, and the numbers weren't even that high. Just like today, if you actually go look at the numbers, it's just not that impressive. But even those are fake, totally fake numbers. Notice, it's just worth pointing out here how it's the middle of summer and all these people are now really freaking out. Now everything is mandated, which doesn't make any sense since this type of sickness is what people typically get in the winter. So, but... They purposefully do it in a nonsensical way because they just want to flex their power and they want to mock people. It doesn't have to make sense because you're going to listen to what they tell you. Just like today, the famous people get it. I don't know why they, they try to talk about all these poor oppressed groups. Oh, black people get it more often. What about the famous people? Those poor famous people, those Hollywood people, they seem to get it at the most, the, the craziest rates. Almost every famous person wants to come and say how they had it because they want to be a part of it. It just goes to the, everyone wants a piece of the pie. Everyone wants a piece of the action. They want to, so Roosevelt, allegedly, home is at his mother's house, suffering from an attack of pneumonia. The illness is not serious though. So they, they don't want you to, they want to be a part of it, but not all of them are going to pretend to be super ill by it. Young folks enjoy lifting of quarantine. Theaters and theaters and other places of amusement well patronized on opening day. And here they just call it an influenza scare. That's all it is. They're trying to scare you. The amusement centers of Boise were well attended Thursday night. Particularly so in respect to the dance pavilions. So here, Tahiti builds pyres of, so this, back then, Tahiti was probably, who knows how many people could even get access to remote places like Tahiti way back in the day, a hundred years ago. So to me, it just reminds me of fake Ooga Booga stories. They, they like to talk today about uncontacted tribes and none of that stuff exists. That's just Hollywood. You're watching a produced documentary when you watch those uncontacted tribe things. It's BS. They don't want you to think that everybody knows about Jesus, but we're already there. Everybody knows who Jesus is all around the earth. There's no such thing as uncontacted tribes. I just thought this was crazy. Tahiti builds pyres of influenza dead. Seventh. So seven is a big number. A seventh of Papit's population succumbs and bodies feed steady fires. 
so they're going to tell you outrageous tales about faraway lands that nobody can corroborate. And how how does something like that get to a remote island of Tahiti, like way back in the day? This was an interesting story. Gauze mask holdups. Rob Jitney Driver it is a 33. W.S. Trickner. So they have, oh, Tickner. I put the R in there myself. W.S. Tickner, Ticker Jitney Driver, 33, Embarcadero. So I don't know what the 30D, I don't know what the 33 means here. If it's talking about their age or this is the location, 33 Embarcadero. Sometimes reading these old newspapers, they were written very differently back in the day. Things have changed a little bit. Um, it's kind of hard to follow sometimes these old, old newspaper articles. And a three, beaten by three passengers wearing an influenza, wearing influenza masks, and that after being gagged and thrown into the bushes, oh gosh, um, near 39th Avenue, his assailants drove off with his automobile, lost $5 in cash and a gold ring. They clubbed him into unconsciousness and threw him by the roadside. Recovering, he dragged himself into the roadway and was picked up by Martin, Free Martin Nathan, 630 Bush Street. So just a outrageous tale. Six million. So we got the six million figure. Where have we, where have we seen the six million figure before? Spanish King, Spanish Flu. Thought that was a interesting headline. Spanish King, Spanish Flu. Alfonso is very ill. So just like today, at incredibly high infection rates, these poor, famous Hollywood people all seem to get it. And it's because they're just, they're pretending. They like to be a part of it. Druggists, please note Vicks Vaporub, oversold due to present epidemic. So today, today people are overselling of hand sanitizer and toilet paper, although that's all past, gone and past, but... Same thing, they were selling out a Vicks Vapo rub, which means that Vicks Vapo probably had the best advertising campaign for the Spanish flu, and they were flying off the shelves. Tremendous demand. And you know, something like this could even be, this itself is probably an advertisement. This is probably a Vicks Vapo advertisement. Quick, go buy it. It's not going to be on the shelves anymore. Quick, go get it. Okay, so now we're almost done, and I just have some of these, some of these sketched, these like more cartoony things are so funny. I just love them. Coughs and sneezes spread diseases, and then look at the bottom caption, as dangerous as poison gas shells. Back in the day, they just had different things to be spooked about. I guess, I guess back in the day, people were spooked of poison gas shells. It's like mini nukes today, and... World War One. remember the weird grenade, throwing the grenade into the car, all these people used to be spooked of different things. Remember growing up in the 90s, we were spooked of acid rain and, uh, what do you call it, quicksand, quicksand, acid rain. There's just like, I think it's so funny, the little subtle things that they used to spook people with. Poison gas shells, I guess is what people were afraid of. So I, I thought this was a great little sketch. Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Great expression on this guy. And I love the people in the background. Oh no, don't do it. There's children. Don't sneeze. Halt the epidemic. Stop spitting, everybody. So spitting probably used to be a big thing that everybody was smoking outside and I um, guess, guess the men would spit on the ground. These were great. I like this person's name too, by Faye King. Faking. Faye King. This guy had his mask over his whiskers. He know where the flu flu moths like to park. <laughs> mask rests. Time for a smoke break. Take the mask off. Get some fresh air. Smoke a cig. Smoke a cigar.
These are fun. Not a success as a love filter. These are just funny. The new cook, another case of mistaken identity. <laughs> Mrs. Jones mistakes the lodger for hubby. <laughs> Anyways, I, I really liked these. These were cool sketches. This one's pretty cute. Did you get that for your birthday? Gee, that's some handkerchief. Yeah, my mother made it for me. It's good for a hundred sneezes. This one's pretty scary. Pluto. Pluto water. Fighting the quote-unquote flu, they, it seems like advertisements back in the day. This kind of reminds me, do you guys know older people on the internet, they, they really like to do this, this type of italicizing, you might call it, I don't know, bold, bold facing, they would bold face certain aspects of a, of a paragraph. I just think it's an interesting generation gap thing. When people write like this on the internet, people call them a boomer and stuff. So it's just an interesting, back in the day, people used to do all caps to kind of emphasize certain words. It's kind of fallen out of, out of use these days. People are like, why are you yelling at me? Fighting the flu. All right, the word undermined here is, is interesting too. Is your vitality being undermined? Yeah, the attacks of Spanish influenza. Pluto water is your, the best ally. But look, it's the devil. What is their icon is this devil? So yeah. Passengers refuse quarantine. Oh, so these were just some these last two were just little clippings that I found. Uh, there's actually you can look online and go find these old newspapers from the 1900s. It's kind of a big pain looking through them and it's pretty low quality, pretty hard to read it. But if you go back and you read the articles around the time of, of this 1919 Spanish influenza thing, you can see that it was a media sensation just like we have today. And the newspapers were full of like half the newspaper was talking about it and the advertisements were talking about it. And so we'll just finish with these two. Um, Oh, I'll, I'll read this. This is interesting enough. I'll read it. In the House of Assembly on Friday, the acting prime minister stated that he had received from the passengers of the steamer Kenilworth Castle, which is on its way to Australia, a resolution proposed by Sir A. Bailey, a member of the African Parliament, demanding copies of all uh, messages dispatched, dispatched from the ship to which the influence of panic in Cape Town could be attributed. A further resolution was received stating that the placing of passengers in an isolation camp was regarded as unjustifiable and notifying the government that the passengers declined to proceed to any such institution and also declined to pay the shipping company any charges for their detention. The resolutions were received with laughter. So do you see how these old articles, they are written in a way that newspaper articles aren't quite written like this and it's a little hard to understand what's going on here, but I think what's going on is the African government was trying to tell another a passenger of people, oh, you got to get quarantined and you got to pay us fees and stuff. And their response was they just laughed and said, no, we're not going to do it. No means no. All you have to say is no. I'm not going to listen to your, your BS. And at the very beginning, I showed a quote from, I had to go find this. And it, it was actually, it took a while to, to find this clipping. Remember at the very beginning of, of this video, there was the person who talked about influenza of the brain. And that's from this, this little clip on the, the reopening of theaters. And just the way it's written, the style in which this is written is very, very different from the way that newspapers are written today. Um... So I, I just thought this was an interesting note. Disregarding altogether the fact that the influenza epidemic had been less severe in cities where the theaters had been allowed to remain open than in those in which they were closed. So because they'll flat out tell you that it's all a bunch of BS and they'll give you con conflicting information. In the places where they, they closed theaters and stuff, they're saying that the epi epidemic was even worse 
than in the places where they allowed all this stuff to remain open. And yeah, they'll they'll gladly go ahead and tell you contradictory information like this because they don't care. You're going to go along with the PSYOP whether or not it makes any sense. Hmm. So here, it's just right here. Uh, government determined that all these forms of pleasure should cease and that instead of the people having something with which to occupy their minds, that they should mope at home and get influenza on the brain. And I'll just end it with this. Maybe I'll do some more of these old things. Let me know what you think in the comments. And actually, I'll just put one more thing, but it's it's not directly related to this. Oh, look at this cool image. This was a really cool image. Oh, and by the way, mask wearing is 49 in Pythagorean. 49 is 7 times 7, and 33 in Chaldean, mask wearing. This is about today, but I just thought it was interesting enough. I want to include it. This article was updated at 3.11 p.m. 3.11, 3 times 11 is 33. But look at what was going on on July 4th, 2019. Portland's police chief calls for an anti-mask law. So in July of last year, there was this article, and this person has kind of the one eye. This is some sort of illumination ritual. That person probably has a dead eye now. But uh, And they use it to just come out with a story. Just look how interesting that is. The police chief of Portland, Oregon, is calling for legislation banning masks worn by demonstrators, whatever. So there are these laws out here that actually make it illegal to wear masks in public. And I just thought that was really interesting that mere months before all this COVID stuff, they were talking in the news about anti-mask laws. So I just thought I would show you guys this. Hope you enjoyed the video. God bless everyone.